intro and action. When I did the Star Wars build, who turns around and talks I, away from the audience? Me, I have a, I have a, I have a battery-powered wireless mic. I can do that. I talked about how all you need to do some modding and make things your own and make them look awesome is just a little bit of spray paint, maybe a Dremel and some desire to hopefully not ruin your computer, but take a chance with it. One of the things though that I see commonly asked is, I don't like the color of my heat sink. Can I spray paint it? And the general consensus has been don't do that because the paint will insulate the cooler. It will reduce its cooling efficiency and raise your temperatures. But Jay, Be Quiet has black fins and stuff. Well, these are ceramic coated, which they say has caused zero difference in terms of their temperature differences. So today, we thought about using this for today's video, but it's already black, so why would we spray paint it? We are gonna do a before and after. We are gonna see what happens when we take this Noctua NHU12S, which is a fairly standard size heat sink tower, and we're gonna see what happens when we pair it with our 9900K, and then we're gonna spray paint it thick. So it's all black and looks good, but we're gonna see what, ha what actually happened to the temperatures. This is where you guys need to comment down below at this point of the video. Predictions, do you think it's gonna matter? I personally am torn on this. I think we might see a couple of C difference, but I don't think it's gonna be this catastrophic failure of cooling like a lot of people seem to think it's gonna be. So right now, while we go to commercial break, take those comments, put them down below. Is it gonna be bad or is it not gonna matter? Or is it gonna matter a little bit, but not enough to truly matter? Is it gonna be with a margin of error? Is it gonna... On today's video, we're gonna show you how insulating your air cooler can actually do some bad stuff that you may not intend to happen. But we're also gonna show you using today's sponsor, how privacy.com can insulate your card numbers to make good things happen. Now, privacy.com is an online service that allows you to create custom cards that you can use when shopping online. Anywhere that accepts a credit card number or a debit card number will work with privacy.com. Now, the cool thing about this is you can set up a either reoccurring monthly payment for subscription services, or even a one-time payment if you're worried about that sketchy site and whether or not it's actually safe. In fact, if somebody tries to use a card that's been closed or paused, you're immediately notified that a decline has occurred using one of your cards and where it was attempted to be used like some of you tried to do last month when we intentionally left those numbers on the screen. Shame on you, but also thanks for proving our point. Now, most of all, privacy.com is about peace of mind when shopping online. There are some pretty sophisticated tools out there trying to get your information, and the best thing to do is keep them from ever seeing your information when shopping online. So start hiding your real card numbers with privacy.com and use my link in the description below, privacy.com slash jays 2 cents and you'll get $5 towards your first purchase. All right, so here's the NHU12S installed onto our 9900KS. Um, we have a couple of things here that we're gonna do for control because we need to control as many variables as possible. So we have the voltage set to uh, adaptive with a target of 1.25, which is pretty low. Um, but this is a 9900KS, so it's gonna go to five gigahertz all core anyway. We do have it locked to all core. We don't want it fluctuating. We also have the fan speed set in BIOS to 100%. We're looking for max thermal capability of this cooler. So having the fan change speed on us would not do us any good. Also having it locked to anything lower than its max cooling capacity or capability also doesn't tell, paint the entire story of what the total cooling capacity of this situation is once we insulate the cooler with paint. We also have, um, we're gonna be doing Cinebench R20 and we're gonna add a third part to this too because one of the things with the Noctua fans is they are extremely quiet, but they also do not move the most amount of air. So and this is one of the older fans too, which is not um, as aggressive, I guess, as the black fans are. The black fans, they kind of made some changes where they were like, okay, maybe a little bit less noise optimization, more aesthetically pleasing. So the newer coolers that we have with the black fans actually move more air. So the third part we're gonna do is testing this not only before and after paint, but also with a better fan on there. We're gonna check that after we see what the delta is between the painted and non-painted. So we're gonna be using, um, after we've locked all those variables I just talked about, is Cinebench R20. We're gonna run this for only two minutes. It does not take that long for an air cooler to reach its max temp, unlike the water thermal capacity taking a long time to absorb all of that heat and that energy. Air coolers do it much quicker. But because Cinebench R20 is an ABX instruction test, it's, it's like a visual representation of Prime 95 almost. It's just, hammers the CPU. You're gonna see temps getting really hot with this cooler on this CPU in this test. But because we know that that's not a real world situation, we wanna see what the max thermal capacity is, obviously in this test before and after paint. 
I want to know what real world is going to be too. So we're going to do Far Cry 5, which is a combined CPU GPU test, which should give us a more realistic example of what the real world is going to experience. My concern and what I want to try and capture here, if it happens this way, is that you may see some temperature difference when painted at the extreme test, but you may not see that difference in a more realistic test. So that's one of the things that we want to check. Also too, another thing I, I'm doing to make sure that this stays consistent is we're using the same thermal compound for each test. So that's the NTH1 that comes with this cooler. Because again, we don't want to change thermal compounds because those are variables and the scientific method says you have to control as many variables and count for them as much as possible. If you have too many variables that can affect the outcome of the test, then it's a flawed test. Otherwise known as every test we probably ever run around here, but that's okay. All right, so here's where our max temperatures were. Max temp was 96 on the package, and you can see a mixture of 90s and high 80s across the board. So the max temperature on this CPU is 105C. At 105C, that's our thermal junction max. That is where it will start reducing clock speeds and reducing voltage to save itself from overheating. Um, that's way too close to comfort, obviously, but remember I said this test is also very unrealistic. This is a stress torture test. So now we need to see what's going to happen with Far Cry. Now because we are running a 5700 XT on here, um, we're not going to be bottlenecking or I guess stressing the CPU quite as hard as if we had like a 2080 Ti, but again this is more of the real world test we're trying to recreate. So at 1080p, this should not have any problem whatsoever, like throwing a decent amount of frame rate at the CPU. We're also gonna run the benchmark three times manually, and then we're gonna check the maximum temps back in hardware monitor. Now, the thing is, regarding how much paint to put on this, I'm not gonna intentionally just lather the crap out of this with paint. I'm gonna paint for full coverage so that you can't see any more of the silver, and then that's where we're gonna leave it. I'm not gonna do a primer or anything like that. I'm kinda doing this the way that I feel like most people would in terms of like, I wanna mod my system and make it look cooler, and I don't like the silver, so I'm gonna spray paint it. That's what I'm kinda going for. So as long as the silver is covered, then it's done. Because I think obviously there becomes a point where I could spray enough paint on this to cause a severe problem. So we're not gonna do that. So this is actually like the seventh run of this that we've done, been doing, not even just three, because we were like, well, we should put it in windowed mode so we could see what hap what's happening. So we did three full screen runs and now three windowed mode runs. And you can see these temperatures are so much more realistic. You can see our max temp is 69 on the package, high 60s on all the cores, a couple of the cores, low 60s. That really shows you what the temperature swing is. But you can see how the CPU is clearly not being pegged in a benchmark like this. Now, yes, I know there's games that will peg a CPU while you're playing the game, like Minecraft being one. I think um, Civilization is one. There's a lot of world-based games that'll peg your CPU, and obviously these are outliers that I can't test for all those situations. Um, but you can see we are running at five gigahertz all core. It jumps up to like 5.026 at some points because the base clock's sort of moving around a little bit. But this is much more realistic of what I would expect to see, especially with the voltage that we're currently running it at. So here's the scores we want to compare to once we paint it. So we'll get filled to get a nice little shot of that. And it's time to... <laughs> I had nothing to do with the number. I just want... I need something to compare it to, Philip. All right, so we're going to go ahead now, shut this down, and we're going to paint it. <laughs> Alright, so here's the Be Quiet one, and here is the Noctua one. Took about three coats of paint. Now the key here is to make sure you get a nice thick buildup of paint where the actual um, part that touches the CPU... No, I'm just kidding, obviously we masked that off. <laughs> oh. Let's see. So Phil, this is your prediction point. Uh, point of, uh, the, where you tell me if you think it did bad or not. <laughs> Out of words. Do you think it hurt the temperatures at all? I think, it, yeah, I think it's gonna be like maybe two degrees. I don't think it's gonna even... Okay, so you're gonna, you're gonna bet low, I'll bet high. Yeah, I really do not think that this is going to uh, have changed at all. Like, in the least. Putting a dent in NVIDIA. <laughs> the only thing AMD's denting is their own their reputation with the driver. So we're all set up on the test bench here. We got cinnamon ready to go, but I realized I forgot to show you which paint we're using. We've used this paint a bunch around here. This is just the Krylon Fusion. It's an all-in-one paint and primer. This is satin black. I really like this paint because depending on the color that you go with, um, you can get some that dries super fast. Like here's the matte deep gray. This is the one we used on the Star Wars build and it dries to the touch in 10 minutes and it's dried to handle and sand in 30. So it's um, extremely fast acting, which is why we're able to do this video in the same day and it's all dry and- Fast acting today. Okay, so we clearly gained some temperature 
kind of across the board. I know we gained 3C on the package. We went from 96 to 99, but all of these seem to be up between 3 and 4C. One of the cores almost hit 100. Now remember, 105 degrees Celsius is where this CPU will start to throttle. We also talked about the fact that this is a completely unrealistic test. However, if an AB comparison is what we're looking for, we can already discern that when the max cooling capability of the if the max cooling capability of the cooler is what we're testing, then yes, indeed, the paint did insulate and cause a less efficient transfer of heat. Because remember, what's happening is you have a vapor chamber; it's wicking. Um, that fluid and it's grabbing the heat and as it heats it turns into a vapor moves it up the chamber moves all the heat to all of those fins Those fins act as just basically a big sheet of metal surface area That's all stacked and then the fan moves the heat off of those into the atmosphere If it can't get from the fin to the air as quickly or as efficiency Which is what the paint is theoretically happening is doing here is it's insulating creating another barrier between that transfer then we're seeing right here there was clearly a difference in temperature. So yes, we've already confirmed that this does indeed increase your temperatures if the cooler capacity is at its max. That's one of the reasons why we chose this cooler too and not the big double tower cooler because we do have one of the, the NH whatever, blah, 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 D14s or D15, whatever it is. We do have one of those and I think that that would be even less impacted by this. But we're gonna go ahead and do our Far Cry 5 test and then we wanna do the same test with a better fan because I still think by getting rid of this ultra quiet, lower speed fan for something a little bit more reasonable, I think we can get these temps back down to below our base test, if you want to know the truth. All right, so it looks like the temperature stayed fairly the same. That 70C was there before we started the six tests. That was from loading the game. It spiked suddenly. Um, 69, 69, 68, 68, 72, 68, 70, 68. So it looks like we gained one C, maybe two, like on that one. So in true Mythbusters fashion, we have now confirmed, oh, and the test just ended. We've now confirmed that it does indeed insulate and particulate the heat and not let it out as well. So the question now is, what does it take? All right, well, we found a fan that moves more air. It's one of the older maglev LED fans from Corsair. It's Phil's old fan. And since we have less efficiency of the heat coming out, we need to just have more airs per paints. That's the formula, airs per paints in this particular instance. Respl and ain't no replacement for displacement. All right, last test with the 2400 RPM maglev fan on here. That definitely is moving a crap ton more air. All right, so we'll run three tests, or we'll let the two minutes go and we'll see where it lands. But so far the temps are significantly cooler. So we lost seven Celsius by putting this fan on there. And, and, three and these- from original, right? And three from original before painted. So I bet you we'd be at like 90 or less with unpainted. All right, so here's the deal. There's a couple of recommendations I can make here. One, does it affect your temperatures? Yes, it does. Two, should you do it? That depends. How close are you to maxing out your cooler before you paint it? Are you running it at its ragged edge of what it's capable of cooling at its, you know, as it sits in its out of the box configuration? If you're running like a giant dual tower that's silver, and you're running like a 9700K or even a 9900K, you'd be just fine. Um, you'd probably want to offset it with a little bit better fan like we did, because obviously at that point you need to just brute force it with airflow to make it cool better. Um, if you're running like some big giant Threadripper or something that's air-cooled, I don't know if I'd recommend painting. Um, same thing with AMD, but AMD I think is a little bit less um, of an issue than Intel, because Intel with it having its, its terrible solder tim, and it's not great efficiency of transfer of heat out of the IHS into the cooler already, and then having the cooler not do a great job of transferring it to the air, then I wouldn't necessarily recommend it if you're on the ragged edge. AMD CPUs though, being truly soldered, run a lot cooler and have a much more efficient transfer of heat. So you'd probably be a lot less noticeable with, a, with an AMD CPU. But this is one of those things where I'm like, you know what, I have been asked this a few times and I did not have a definitive answer. And I just don't like regurgitating and throwing up answers other people say in forums and stuff without having my own first-hand experience. So I can tell you in this instance with this CPU and this cooler and these fans with that paint, it mattered. In real world situation, it mattered a whole lot less. In a torture situation, it mattered more. With a better fan, it mattered less. Is anyone truly surprised by these results? Who was right in the comments? Oh God. Who, made, who was right? All right, if you were right, say, I was right. <laughs> yeah, and make an edit to your, your initial comment and then add the, whether or not you were right. Oh, I was wrong. 
Yeah, it's both of us. Yeah, wrong. we were wrong. We would have. To uh, you were wrong, and I was wronger. <laughs> yeah.